Moving on to our last speaker of today, uh, Siobhan Kelly. She is an agribusiness uh, economist at the Food Systems and Food Safety Division at the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO. The screen is yours. Welcome. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much. And also thank you for your kind invite to be with you here today. Um, okay, so just to recap, you will move the slides for me. I don't need to share my screen. Yes. That's true. Okay, excellent. Um, okay, so just for any of you who are not familiar um, with the Food and Agriculture Organization, so it's the oldest specialized agency of um, the United Agents of the United Nations. Uh, with the objective of uh, achieving food security for all. And equally important in um, today's modern times is that all people have regular access to enough high quality food um, to lead healthy lives. So um, FAO um, and the previous speaker spoke a little bit about it alongside uh, the Rome based agencies, EFAD, the International Food Fund for Agricultural Development and the World Food Programme were requested by the UN Secretary General um, to undertake the task of convening the Food Systems Summit. So FAO was on the advisory committee and the scientific committee, and that was a very busy but exciting um, year for the organization last year um, in terms of its role in the Food Systems um, Summit. So I understand that the network has been very engaged in the dialogues around the summit, so I won't go into the details <clears throat> in terms of um, uh, what the the uh, the summit process was, um, but just really to focus on the post phase. Um, so we've heard um, about the transformational pathways from Sweden. Um, which I, I was really interested in in hearing you know, from the from the national perspective. Um, I'll also we've also heard a little bit about the coordination uh, hub, so I'll share a little bit, a um, few more insights on that, um, and also uh, discuss um, a bit more about multi stakeholder collaboration. I know that's an important um, objective of the Siani network. And um, also it was something that was very much underscored um, in the summit as an important way of working if we are to achieve sustainable food summit. So um, yeah, we heard some of the figures before in terms of the um, inclusivity uh, of, of the summit and um, the uh, extent with which uh, people were engaged. So moving then beyond the summit, um, we, the, the summit organizers and the conveners uh, that have been uh, identified on the ground to support um, the national dialogues. Um, and also the follow-up to the national dialogues and, and the national pathways. So these national conveners are usually high-level uh, policymakers, and it's in a very uh, important role and important interlocutor for an organization like FAO to be able to engage um, with these people and their teams to uh, support the continuation of um, food systems dialogues. So the dialogues just didn't finish. Um, with the uh, the summit in September 2000, um, uh, um, 2021, but are continuing and will continue. Um, and um, also the uh, finalization of the national uh, pathways there. So far, there's been 111 countries that have submitted and committed to national pathways, but they're ongoing. There's still a lot of countries that are still developing and refining their pathways. And that's something that the FAO is supporting countries with. Um, and uh, also uh, something that FAO is supporting with is continuing to build this and convene and support the convening of these uh, cross national and uh, regional um, collaboration. So as we know, food systems does not operate in a national vacuum. 
um, and um, it's very important for countries as well to engage with their um, regional counterparts um, to be able to identify the best um, sustainability strategies uh, for their food systems moving forward. And um, also the importance of inclusive governance. So, um, yeah, something that I think that the, the Food Systems Summit has really um, uh, brought to the fore is um, that food systems is not just the responsibility of the um, departments um, or the ministries of agriculture and food, but really it spans across um, numerous um, ministries, numerous um, institutions. And if it is going to be sustainable, um, all voices um, need to be um, included in those um, in, do in those dialogues, heard, and also um, that their um, their space also needs to be informed with uh, reliable and credible uh, data and science based evidence. Um, and I would again, I was very uh, happy to hear the uh, previous uh, speaker, Maria, also uh, underscore the importance of this science. Um, so uh, if we speak, we speak about the transformational pathways and um, uh, this is a, a synthesis of um, uh, um, the pathways that were developed within the Mediterranean region. So FAO par participates in a um, FAO participates in a, uh, the Sustainable Food Systems Mediterranean uh, program and um, is uh, carried out a, a synthesis, a uh, stock taking exercise um, of the various uh, pathways that were developed. So on the inner circle there, you see the specific technical priorities that have been identified by the countries. And then the outer circle refers to those more enabling environment um, aspects. Um, so I think for the first time, you really see the emphasis coming up be to, uh, related to the circular economy, um, the green circular economy, that is the land and the blue circular economy. So really um, uh, integrating the importance of um, not just the circular economy on, on, on the on, on land, livestock, um, agriculture, or food production, uh, but also the importance of fisheries um, and the sustainability of fisheries. Um, also the rural urban um, linkages. So again, not just um, uh, highlighting uh, the importance that uh, the rural, um, the rural uh, space uh, is, um, is very much linked to the urban space and there's a continuum there and, and that, that continuum um, and the importance of those linkages also need to be, um, to be emphasized. Okay, so just to uh, say, moving on to the next slide, that there are a number of publications that have come out and continue to come out related to the synthesis um, of the um, of the dialogues, and uh, you can find uh, those um, online. I can share the links if if anybody has difficulty um, um, locating them. But they, um, yeah, they really are useful to understand what countries' priorities are, and uh, also to show that uh, across the national context and across regions, those uh, priorities um, differ. Even though we're all moving in the same direction towards sustainability in our food systems, um, so another important. Um, aspect and in order to support uh, countries refine and implement uh, their transformational pathways and importantly integrate the pathways into existing programs and policies, the Secretary General uh, mandated the establishment of the Food um, Systems Coordination Hub. Um, so the hub takes over from um, the secretariat responsible for the organization of the of the summit. Um, it takes over on the 1st of April. So the formation and establishment of the hub um, has been taking place over the past um, couple of months. 
Um, so it was important uh, for country, for member states, that a new institution was not established. So this is not a new institution and um, it does not uh, require additional funding. Rather, the hub aligns with the UN's existing functions, capabilities and structures. So it leverages the existing assets that the UN system has to offer. Um, so it's uh, based in Rome, in FAO headquarters, as we heard, and it's currently made up of about 12 to 15 professionals seconded from across different UN agencies, FAO, uh, WFP, the World Health Organization, um, UNEP, UNDP, and, and so forth. So um, yeah, so the, the main functions um, are to support the countries in this continuation, uh, but to ensure that there is coordination. Um, so in an effort, institutions, UN agencies, NGOs are all very much invested and keen to support the sustainability of, um, of food systems, but to ensure that we don't trip over ourselves and uh, are not a, a, a victim of our own um, uh, of our own aspirations. The important thing is that these efforts are aggregated and coordinated so that there's much more impact um, on the ground. And, and that's what the hub will contribute to. Um, it will also make sure that um, at the level of the UN, a secretariat that the um, the food system is there to the fore in terms of um, ensuring that there is strategic thought leadership um, at the highest level. Um, and in addition, um, it is also um, uh, tasked with the importance of connecting with the broader ecosystem. So there were a lot of coalitions um, that were formed um, in preparation for the food summit, uh, summit and some of them, not all of them, but some of them are ongoing. Um, and so linking to them and, and also the broader system. For instance, we're hearing a lot about energy in the, in the media and um, uh, the food system, obviously uh, from production right through processing is right through to uh, retailing is highly dependent on energy. And so the dialogue, for instance, between those two sectors is very important. So the, um, the outer um, boxes there are just to give you examples of um, different ways in which uh, the food, uh, the, the hub will coordinate with um, different um, and related initiatives. So are, these are just some examples that I'm familiar with from working within the, um, the FAO, but uh, obviously that's not to say um, that, um, that they are all, but also importantly to say that there are a lot of um, initiatives now um, being uh, established that are uh, coming in behind the hub because as I said there's 12 to 15 professionals it's not a lot and so uh, the hub is very reliant on uh, the UN system broadly but also um, is going to be um, working um, closely with uh, other initiatives to support it in its role of these four tasks that you see on the um, on the diagram here. And then um, lastly, just to um, emphasize the role of um, multi-stakeholder collaboration for food systems transformation. So as I said, this is something that really came out to the fore in, um, in, uh, from the summit and that um, stakeholders um, and the food system is very much reliant on such a broad range of um, stakeholders. And as we've heard, a number of them do not have the same uh, power. They do not have the same voice. To the, they do not have the same institutional representation. And so um, in order to make sure that we do have that sustainability, that, that those voices really do need to come through on an equal footing. Um, and so this is where multi-stakeholder collaboration um, comes in. And so um, it's not um, uh, what we're, uh, for instance, I can refer to and discuss an initiative that um, 
I'm engaged um, with the U UNEP, uh, UNEP, the United Nations Environment Program, and um, UNDP, the United Nations Development Program. And so we're consolidating um, our respective competencies and um, knowledge on governance within the food system and um, developing an, an initiative that really kind of drills down and looks at um, governance uh, capacities and mechanisms in terms of the how-to for food systems. So integrating a systemic lens within to multi-stakeholder collaboration and then uh, embedding it within uh, the agri-food system um, to make sure that uh, it's not just about dialogues, it's not just about uh, bringing people around the table because that is not the panacea for the food system. Uh, but moreover, it's about ensuring that these ways of getting people around the table that, as I said, they're informed, people are informed with the latest up-to-date science and data, um, so the inputs going into those dialogues are um, credible and of a high quality so that the outputs coming out of, of um, multi-stakeholder work leads to um, integrated, uh, implementable policies and programs for driving the sustainability of the um, agri-food system. So uh, I've run out of time, so I'm um, happy to answer any questions and um, yeah, feel free to reach out to me. Um, also, um, if, uh, yeah, via my email um, and yeah, thank you again for the invite to be able to present today, over. Thank you so much for presenting and giving us uh, an out line of the coordination hub in Rome and the work that you're doing at FAO.